That brings us to broad topics, starting with the NWA World Heavyweight Championship match between Jeff Jarrett and the icon, Sting. It is Sting. On the July 20th impact, we open. JB is outside Sting's locker room. He reminds us it'll be Sting versus Jarrett at Hard Justice. Jay Lethal walks out. If you remember, Jay Lethal got the pinfall in the Team Canada Disbands match yes. back last month. So Jay Lethal will get a title shot of his choosing. JB is like, hey buddy, you got an X Division title match tonight. And Jay Lethal's like, I was just talking to this Sting guy. And he was like, I should risk it all and challenge Jeff Jarrett tonight. So I'm going to do that. I like that. And I like that um, Jimmy's like, oh, he doesn't know about that shit. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have to go straight to Jarrett and tell him. <laughs> uh, Mike and Don recap Sting coming back from the lighter gasoline in the eyes at and the Victory Road 4-way. Jarrett is doing his favourite thing. He's shouting at Mike and Don, being like, what the hell, guys? Uh, that's a conspiracy against me. Sting has conned Lethal out of an X Division title match in order to get Lethal to challenge me so that we can get the title off Jeff Jarrett. It's more screwy, screwy stuff. Sting is going to come out of the rafters and screw me because he's afraid of me at hard justice. It's a classic, how can we get Jeff Jarrett on the show? Have him grab and yell at Mike and Don. Even though he is in the main event in the world title match. I know. We can't just be like, he'll be here later. This is just his favorite segment. Mm. We do get more than one this month. Mm. And then main event, Jeff Jarrett defeats Jay Lethal to retain the NWA world title. It's a fun little match, little TV effort. Because like, it is six minutes... And that is like a a fairly broad critique you could have of TNA TV this month in particular. Mm. The wrestling has never meant less to this show. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't think there's an era where like like there's some shows. I can't remember which impact it is exactly. But like there is like a two minute squash, a two minute tag, and then like a four minute main event. And that is all the wrestling you get in the, the hour of TV. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not like deluded about the amount of wrestling that should be on these shows. It's an hour show with a lot of mouths to feed. I expect matches to be four to eight minutes tops, but like them being like two to four minutes tops is kind of a bummer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've just kind of come to expect it though. I don't expect like ten minute affairs from this show. Mm, you've been beaten into submission. I don't. Know, but like, I don't know if I'd want much longer matches to be honest. Like. I appreciate the expediency of everything and fitting, like, so much stuff into these shows. Because, like, there's a lot you can say about TNA TV. You can't call it boring, though. Which is the weirdest thing that you're like, we're going to bring in Russo. Mm. The idea that, like, this TV needs to be transformed into Russo is, like, it's already, like, it's not, it will get worse and it will get more chaotic. You, like, watch these shows being, like, there's a lot happening in very short matches. And then you watch a Russo show and you're like, how did you make it even shorter matches and even more happening? How did Mm. you do that? It's crazy. But, like, it's not like this is, like, ideologically super opposed to the way Vince Russo views wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like a better version of his kind of show, which is all about stories and angles. And then the wrestling is kind of secondary. But, like, but the angles aren't, like, insane enough. Yeah. So, like, this this match does go six or so minutes. And I re- I love this match. Because it's, like, it's the classic Jarrett eats shit for nearly <laughs> the entirety of the six minutes. Which he doesn't usually do. He usually has to get his heat and he has to do his crowd brawling. But, like, from the jump, Lethal power bombs Jarrett out of the corner, runs wild. Lethal gets a near fall on an elbow. Jarrett tries to powder out, but Lethal falls him out. Throws him back in, gets a near fall on a crossbody. Jeff Jarrett briefly turns the tie, but then Lethal hits a dive and it's only after Steiner walks out and distracts Lethal that Jared finally gets the heat but like then you come back from the break and you're still like going crazy Lethal reverses a figure four into his own but Steiner pulls Jared to the ropes Lethal takes out Steiner with a dive gets a big near follow on a diving headbutt as Jeff Jarrett does his signature single arm in the air kick out <laughs> Steiner hits Lethal with the pipe and Jared falls with the stroke off the ropes for the win like it's six minutes and Lethal gets like five minutes of it it is unnaturally generous of Jeff Jarrett. He must just like this guy. Or he values, like, the idea of being the underhanded champion who can't get a clean we does. The idea of, like, it just beating him. Yeah, because, like, he doesn't do these kind of matches that often. And I think they're more in his skill set. Because the kind of match he usually does is the kind of match where, like, he's on top and somebody's fighting from underneath. Mm-hmm. Like, think about, like, how he'd wrestle AJ, for example. Whereas this kind of match, where he's doing, like, the Ric Flair territory match... Or like, guy takes him right up to the limit, he's showing ass the whole time, and he barely escapes 
apes with the belt is much closer to what you should want out of this kind of Jeff Jarrett NWA title reign versus the kind of prestigious NWA best wrestler champion kind of thing. Yeah, uh, this is a better role for him, like, just, like, obviously, you know? Mm. And you are right that, like, he very clearly likes JD <laughs> Yeah, he sees something though. As illustrated by them being in a stable in 2024. Mm. And, you know, the Ric Flair last match pairing. Mm. Yeah, it's it's fun how they're like, this is kind of the genesis of that relationship. Like, obviously they both have worked together on, like, in the same company before this, but like, Jarrett giving Lethal this kind of TV main event is, is very much a sign of what he does think of Lethal. Mm. Steiner locks in the Steiner recliner after the match, but Sting returns to make the save. JB runs up to Christian going into Cornette's o- office after Steiner interferes in the match of Lethal. Christian's wants to be in the corner of Sting at Hard Justice just in case he interferes there to even the odds. Even those damn odds. And you trust Christian, right? Immediately I'm like, this motherfucker is the most untrustworthy person in the world. (laughs) No, why would you not trust Christian? He has a track record of trustiness. Trustiness? Trustiness. Mm. He he would never betray a friend. Never. Sting would never be betrayed either. Everyone loves Sting and Christian doesn't do betraying. Yeah. Uh, I I have a question and this will spoil this. So Sting, you're uh, sorry, Christian, you're familiar with him. Um, mm. He will, in fact, turn on Sting. What? At this pay per view event. In the character of Christian Cage, do you think he has already made this decision? Or do you think it is like he chose to, he had the guitar in hand, he saw Sting going for it, and he was like, you know, flick of the moment, I'm gonna lay this guy out? I believe, no, I haven't, like, we talked about this last time, but I haven't rewatched these episodes since they aired, so I don't remember the minutia of the story. But I believe the story they tell is that Christian decided in the match. Mm. I think the thing they do is like, I did all these things. I ran off Steiner. I gave you a belt shot and you still couldn't get it done. So fuck you. I'm hitting you with a guitar. Mm. So you believe him at this point? That he's like a, a nice guy on Sting's side? Mm. Nah. <laughs> so you think it was all a plan ahead of time? And then he perhaps did those things in the moment to sort of, as justification for what he would do. And like, he's been leaning heels since Slammiversary. Like, it's not like this is the first time he's, he's been doing this, you know? And Sting is even like, you're beginning to be a lot like Jeff Jarrett. And Christian's like, ah, oh, wait a minute, you can't say that about me. Mm. So, uh, yeah, he's he's been pl- he's been conspiring against Sting for a while. <laughs> so you don't believe him and his apology next week no especially because like this is to, to be fair it's been the story they've told all year like even going back to the sting and christian against monty and jarrett match the story of that match was can christian trust sting mm. so like they have been kind of at odds like from the from the jump okay mm. so yeah a july 27th impact christian does come to the ring after sting became number one contender christian finally realized something he came back to make tna the greatest wrestling company in the world and the only way to do that is to get rid of jarrett Jarrett, even though when he came back Chris Sting, uh, Christian just won the belt a month later so you know he should have been happy he should have just left in February I guess he did leave in he left in January <laughs> you see that was the problem Jarrett got the belt back <laughs> but no Sting showed up in January mm. then left Hmm. then he came he he wasn't there in february when christian won the belt <laughs> so when he came back in march he just thought jarrett was still champion <laughs> yeah that's the problem he just wasn't watching the pro- uh, the product no so christian was too busy being selfish to realize that there is the noble goal of removing jeff jarrett so christian asked Cornette if he could have stings back at the pay-per-view and the only person who could answer that question is sting himself <laughs> It's also very fitting. Who else would answer that question? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, that is his choice. Mm. Oh, not just, I'm going to be there and you can't do anything about it? Yeah, like, or well, even like, Cornette being like, I can't, I'm not going to side off on it, <laughs> ask him. Yeah. It's like, did Steiner will be there, but like, Sting has to say yes. I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> mm. Sting appears in the rafters, says TNA is the best wrestling company in the world, and says he'll give Christian his answer in due time, but he's focused on removing Jared. So, again, kind of a dick move by Sting here, right? If we're analyzing each individual part, like, Sting mm-hmm. could have just been like, yeah, man. Like, it's not like he makes a big hoo ha out of it. It's just like next week they go, Sting said yeah. Yeah, because like, it's, if you're Christian and you are in fact of noble intent, you just came out of here. You apologized, you Mm. said the dude was right, and you said, I will help you, because Steiner will be at the pay-per-view, and Sting is like, eh, we'll find out next week. (laughs) Yeah, but then, like, he doesn't even do, like, a big thing about it, and be like, Christian, you're right, he's just like, at some point he told Mike tonight, yeah, tell Christian I said yeah. Mm. So, you know, kind of a dick move himself. So, you can't trust this Sting character either. Mm. 
Sting lost some points in the locker room when he refused to wear an eye patch at the TV tapings last week, the day after Jeff Jarrett threw gasoline in his face on the pay-per-view. Sting's reason? It would look silly. Sting has earned a ref over time over the years, and reaffirmed it in TNA of being difficult to work with when it comes to details of storylines and angles presented to him, yet he's not known at all as a strong idea man for himself. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, Dave has more colour here, that like he doesn't want to do anything that feels like hokey wrestling, and like the the exact explanation for why he didn't want to do it is his son got gasoline in his eye at one point and was fine a few hours later, so it wasn't realistic. I mean, yeah, fair. I, I don't know why you would wear an eye patch for gasoline. I would have to question uh, the stinger's parenting if his son <laughs> is getting gasoline in his eyes, but his point stands. He threw it in his eyes. He's like, <laughs> I have to practice a spot real quick. Come here. Yeah, he went there the day before the show. It's like, would this actually hurt? They want me to do this. I need to know, is it realistic? I'm using real gasoline. Uh, cry me a river because of the gasoline in your eyes. Yeah, okay. There's a feature on Jared in the show. He complains that TNA is listening to its fans. Says he, he had nothing to do with Larry and Earl's actions at Slammiversary and he'll take a polygraph <laughs> test to prove it. Says Cornette, Sting and Christian are colluding to take him out of TNA, but he'll have Steiner to watch his back at the pay-per-view. That's cute. I like the, like, the, the sound bite of, like, TNA is doing the worst thing of all time, listening to its fans. But yeah, like, again, like, it's good because they're framing it as, like, this is the heels opinion there. Mm, well, it's a fun soundbite to come from Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. As you said, following week on Impact, JB just kicks off the show and is like, uh, Sting accepted. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's so anticlimactic. <laughs> Uh, Jared comes in and complains. Slick Johnson comes in and informs them that there's a mandatory Cornette meeting tonight, and he especially wants to talk to Steiner. They threaten Slick because they want to know where Cornette and Christian are, so then they go on the hunt for Christian. Wait, okay, wait, wait there's, there's, there's definitely a joke in that. Uh, Crusades, so, uh, something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're hunting for a Christian. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was so, it was so highbrow. It went right, right over my yeah, head, you see. There's something there, there's something there. Just pretend I said mm. it and it was funny. <laughs> Jarrett and Steiner attack Classic. Lethal backstage, demanding Christian's location. JV informs Jarrett that Christian isn't even here yet. Jarrett doesn't believe him, so this is, they're going <laughs> to say make Christian come to them. Dope. Jarrett demands Christian come out later in the show. Larry Zabisco comes out wearing a hairpiece. He's just gotten off the phone with Cornette, and if people don't follow the following orders, they'll be fired. Steiner has to be at the company meeting later tonight, and Jarrett must leave the building immediately, <laughs> or he'll be fired. Again, like, listen, I appreciate that, um, but I don't know the business sense of, of a Jim Cornette to be like, I'm going to just fire our champion after we just had this tumultuous title situation. Or mm. is it a secret plan all along? God. Is everything a secret plan in this company? Jeff Jarrett seems to think so. That man is telling me that God. everything is a conspiracy, so maybe Jim Cornette couldn't find probable cause to get rid of Jarrett based on the Slammiversary main event, mm -hmm. but here he is given a clear set of instructions and then he disobeys them and nothing happens actually, so, well... <laughs> So, all in all, I don't know where we stand. <laughs> mm, AMW talked Jared out of the building because he's real mad. Um, Mike today sits down with Sting. He's happy with Cornette so far. He's on a quest to take out Jared, but the world title is secondary. I like that he's just like, ah, oh, I got no problems with Cornette. <laughs> yeah, th things have gone pretty well with him so far, actually, yeah. yeah. There's not enough room for both Sting and Jeff Jarrett and TNA. <gasps> so at the classic Jim Cornette company meeting, which we will come back to multiple times, he's in the ring. He doesn't want to take up a bunch of TV time, unlike some other bosses on TV. Ooh. He dismisses every, like, he goes through a bunch of match announcements that we'll talk about as we go through those programs, and then dismisses everybody except Steiner and Christian. If they want to get involved, then so be it. So he books Steiner versus Christian as the TV main event next week. They're incentivized to take each other out ahead of Hard Justice. That's his pitch. It's like, you want to get involved? You want to make sure Steiner doesn't interfere at Hard Justice? We'll take him out next week. You don't even have to wait to Hard Justice. Uh, Steiner says Christian should go back to Mexico North and then apologizes to Mexicans. <laughs> For comparing them to Canada. Yeah. Uh, the worst thing he could possibly say to them. Oh, 2006. Christian is going to hand him his ass next week. Then a fan in a mask, which they cut to during an X Division uh, four-way, six-way. There's a multi-man match where during, I think, PD's entrance or Lethal's entrance. Five-way. You can see... Uh, oh, what the, you counted the X Division wrestlers, thanks, Lee. No, I remember. Uh, but yeah, there's a man in a sting mask during Lethal's entrance that they conspicuously frame in the shot. And later in the show, it turns out it is, in fact, Jeff Jarrett in disguise. I do enjoy that he um he was like, I gotta check out some X Division. Oh, his favorite wrestler, Jay Lethal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Sanjay in the match too. Scouting his future stable. Oh my god. Where's Satnam? He was sitting in the crowd next to him, also oh wearing a sting mask. Uh, yeah, they attack uh, Christian and then they beat up Christian and then Jarrett does the ha 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 and points at his head. <laughs> <laughs> 
because he's so smart and his plan came together. Um, I actually, I really like the Cornet segment as a whole. Mm-hmm. I just think Cornet is a good speaker. And, like, I like him just being like a boss that's like, all oh, these guys fucking hate each other. Let's book match. Yeah, I do like that. It's not like, oh, the no fighting or, or blah, blah. It's just like, uh, you hate each other, match. You hate each other, match. You hate each other, match. You two want to get involved, match. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I enjoyed the segment as a whole. I thought it was like a good main event segment. It does continue mm. the tradition of like TNA main events being big in ring promo segments. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs wrestling? I think this is the show where it's, yeah, LAX defeated Chase and Ransom and Darrell Clark in a squash. The newly franchised Naturals beat AMW in like two minutes. And then the X Division match went like four minutes. Like this was the show that was like, oh, no wrestling this week. <laughs> All right. But yeah, and because like the idea was Cornette was gone for two weeks. We were talking about like his, his weird schedule in the last show where he has like a bunch of Ring of Honor dates to conflict and like convention dates to conflict. So he missed the first TV taping of the month, which is the reason he had to come out on the third show of the month to be like, ah, oh, lay down the law. I like his justification for it, though. He's like, I'm doing work. Mm, I'm what busy. Do you, I don't want to be on TV. Guys, what do you guys want from me? I'm still making the matches. Yeah. August 10th Impact, there's a bunch of features. It was the ones replayed during the fire, but like recounting the story of Jarrett and Sting and everything that happened that took us to this point. And then the TV main event, Scott Steiner versus Christian Cage. So they did a thing this month. Mm-hmm. Where they kept, like, booking big pay-per-view quality main events. Yes. But, like, every time you booked it, you're like, there's gonna be some bullshit. It creates, a, I think, a reoccurring theme that any time you hear Mike Tanay and Don West say the words, pay-per-view quality for a television match, that television match is not going to have a finish. Yeah, which obviously, which honestly will make it pay-per-view quality in a couple months. Hmm, because they do the same with the Rhino and Joe match, don't yeah. they? Where they're like, this is a big pay-per-view quality main event. No finish. Yeah. So for this one, Cornette's on commentary. Today also puts over Cornette for not being on TV all the time, as he is on commentary in his third segment on this show. <laughs> Uh, Christian put his feet in the ropes going for a pin, Liam. How do you feel about that? That's, uh, that's somewhat heelish, but you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Doesn't cause you to trust him less? Uh, I already don't trust him. <laughs> Steiner hits a big top rope, Simone drop. Jared comes out and the match is thrown out. Jared and Steiner beat up Christian and Jared puts Christian in the Scorpion Deathlock. Then the lights go out. They come back on. Sting is suddenly in the ring. He suddenly has Jared in the Scorpion Deathlock. Clears the ring. Christian hands the NWA title to Sting as they shake hands. It's a good segment. It's like, I, I like the light shenanigans. Yeah, that's one of those things because like there, there, there is maybe an argument. It's like that's too close to magic. You can't have magic. No, that's just paying off the guys. <laughs> yeah, this thing just uh, talks to the lighting crew, and he's very fast. Yeah. But it's a great visual. Yeah, lights go down. Christian is in the deathlock. Lights come up. Sting is there with Jarrett in the deathlock. It's a good It's a good bit. It is a good bit. Hard Justice opens with a video that is like, light and dark, evil, good, seduced <laughs> by darkness? Christian? Okay. Foreshadowing? Mm. It also has a Barry Scott doing some like chanting. It's really cool. We have two backstage interviews, one with Steiner. He does the, he's like, Sting could have picked anybody. Could have picked the ultimate warrior. Could have picked Lex Luger. Could have picked Goldberg. <laughs> But he chose Christian. And we all know Canadian white trash is much worse than American white trash. So Christian is the lowest form of homo sapien. <laughs> Sick. So, so we now know Christian is worse than Mexicans and American white trash. Mm-hmm. I think all Canadians are worse than Mexican. Yeah. Is the implication. Not my actual thoughts. I think everyone's equal. Maybe that makes me controversial. At least he's not like, like he's the lowest form of homo sapien. At least he's mm. ad- still admitting he is the same species. Hmm. Not some kind of Neanderthal, perhaps. Mm, some uh, missing link. Mm, no, it's a different wrestler. Shut up. JV has Christian. Christian suggests Jarrett set the building on fire to get out of his title match. That's good. He then mocks Steiner, and he'll make sure Sting wins tonight. Feature on Sting and Jarrett. And then our main event for the NWA world title. Jeff Jarrett defeats Sting to retain the belt after shock of all shocks the Christian Cage turned on Sting. I can't believe it. There was no way of seeing it coming. Yeah, um... I mean, I don't think anyone was surprised. Mm -hmm. See, like, a lot of the times I get angry at someone turning if they've, like, been helping the whole time. Like, you know, like, the the worst of it is, like, the the classic, like, tag thing. Yeah. Where, like, you know, they team up for the whole match working together and then, like, last second swivel the hips and, like, lay someone out. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, then why did you do the whole fucking match? But, um, I don't know, like... I guess we've laid out two scenarios, one in which he was, like, sort of building up plausible deniability and one where he, like, made the choice during the match. So I'm, like, fine with it. How do you feel about the fact that this is not leading to Sting versus Christian? That's 
seems silly. This is leading back into Jarrett versus Stain. That seems silly. Like this, I've always said, if I could transport back into TNA history and be given total control. If you were like, Garrett, you can go and change the past in one way. It's just like, no Russo here. Sting, you do this exactly as you do. And then Bound for Glory is Joe beats Jarrett and then Sting and Christian. Mm. That would make more sense. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense based on the directions coming out of this. Instead of this is just a road bump to get Sting as far as Bound for Glory, where there he can beat Jared. Mm, that's... All right, well, I'll see how it plays out, I guess. Mm. Would you like to talk about Scott Steiner's t-shirt? So, many may be familiar with the classic Got Milk. Yep. Um, Scott Steiner has his own twist on it here. Um, the front of it just says, Got Ecstasy? <laughs> it does. <laughs> And, like, the thing about it is you may think, well, it's Scott Steiner, maybe he just picked up, like, this shirt on in Florida somewhere, you know? And I was like, hell yeah, brother, I love ecstasy. But then you have a look at the back of the shirt where it says Big Papa Pump, and you're like, oh, it's a, it's merch. Mm-hmm. So they, they're selling a shirt that says Got Ecstasy on it. Um, it does. I believe the understanding here is that like the ecstasy is in a sexual nature and not mm. in the in a in the drug sense. Um, still a wild shirt to have as official merch. All right, I'm gonna pitch an alternative. Mm. On the front, got ecstasy. Mm-hmm. On the back, cuntaholic. <laughs> Perfect, right? <laughs> I think he was gone. I think he's never coming back. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I tried to Google to find info about this shirt. Yeah. Because, like, there is a logo on the back that I couldn't make out. I don't think it's a TNA, mer- <laughs> official TNA merchandise. Mm. Every time, every story, when I search the word Scott Steiner got ecstasy, is Scott Steiner talking about how he wouldn't fail a drug test because he wants Triple H to take it with him. So, you know what? That's awesome. <laughs> There's no further information about the Scott Steiner got ecstasy t-shirt. Coming soon to the merch store. <laughs> So the match starts, and would you believe they brawl into the crowd? I, Sting. I do believe that. Which are you more shocked by? The Christian turn or this match having crowd brawl? Both. <laughs> Sting hits Jarrett with a fan, as in the thing that goes whoosh that makes you windy, as opposed to a person. That's a great description of a fan. Mm. Sting goes up top, but Steiner hits him in the knee with a chair as Sting buckles to the floor, or to the mat, which was a, a great looking spot. Mm. Christian got belly to belly on the floor. Jarrett works a figure four for a while. Steiner and Christian get into some shenanigans on the floor that ends with Sting hitting Jarrett with the NWA title for a near fall. All these shenanigans causes Rudy to eject Christian, and then Steiner is super happy and gloating, but he also gets ejected. Sting accidentally connects with Rudy Charles with a stinger splash. Steiner comes back, and so does Christian. Christian stops Jarrett from using the guitar. Sting goes up top for some kind of dive, but as he's midair, Christian nails him with the guitar, allowing Jarrett to retain the title. Jarrett sells shock at what Christian did, so you know it's not collusion of some kind, as Christian smirks atop the ramp and Don West is outraged. I mean, it's like, I get it. Uh, I thought Don was really good. Don sold the moment really well. Mm, I don't know, like, it's... I am just happy that we're gonna get heel Christian. Like, this weird sort of in-between guy. How would you rank the babyface run in general? It's fine. I, like, I, mm. you had to do it this way, I think, early on. Yeah. But do you, do you think it's, like, uh, an admission of failure that you're turning him heel within a year? Um... Yes and no. Mm. I think yes in that he probably should have just been, like, the biggest babyface in the company. But no, in that, like, he's just so much better in the role. Yeah. Because, like, I think it would have happened naturally regardless because he is kind of like a smarmy dickhead even as a babyface. And, like, his entire WWE run, he was pretty much a heel. I don't think he was a babyface at all during that run, was he? Yeah, pretty much. He, like, he had to, he had to, he had some, like, face stints that were, like, basically just designed for heel turns again. Mm, because, like, all of Edge Christian was a heel. He was heel when they broke up. I think, like, some of the Jericho stuff, as you said, I think he thought, like, yeah. some of that stuff was, like, baby that face. Started that started as, was... like, a, but again, he was, like, a smarmy dickhead face. And the end game was for him to turn on Jericho. So. Yeah. And then he was a heel after that with Tomko. So, like, it, it, nearly his entire career he was a heel. And he's always been a better heel. I think his best babyface stuff is, like, when he came back. Like, ECW Ace. He was actually mm. quite good as a babyface there, weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> Where he was just, like, the guy having good matches with, like, Zeke and Yoshitatsu on he was, TV. He was kind of just being, like, his TNA babyface character. Mm. But, yeah, every uh, best run of Christian's career. Like, the Randy stuff, the current stuff, the run we're about to get... The 
the, the like peeps and with Tomko, uh, all of that, all of his the Edge and Christian stuff, of course, all of it was a heel. So like he's just a better heel. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about Sting and Jarrett as a wrestling match? <laughs> Like, it was fine. I really don't have a problem with it. Mm. It was exactly what you'd expect, especially with, with the, the match was... It, I, I have less of a problem with the fact that, like, the match was all about Steiner and Christian because, like, the build was all about Steiner and Christian. Yeah. Like, if you bought this pay-per-view thinking, I'm going to get a clean Jarrett and Sting match, you deluded yourself. Yeah, exactly. 